Food inflation in Nigeria currently stands at 24.61%, an all-time high, driven by a range of global and local challenges. Food companies around the continent lose an estimated over $4 billion due to factors often outside their control. This means they have to compensate for their losses by redistributing the cost of wasted food items. These costs are then typically passed on to consumers, adding to an already precarious situation with food prices. Research from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and UK Aid found that most households in Nigeria and other low- and middle-income countries spend about 85% of their income on food consumption. The last report from the National Bureau of Statistics showed that food inflation rose to 21.61% from 24.45% in March. This follows the trend that Nigeria has witnessed has witnessed in recent times. So what are the factors that account for Nigeria's rising food prices and what are the solutions? Joining me now is Tega or Tim, CEO and founder of Figure, a technology company that develops Internet of Things powered solutions in order to support last mile delivery of perishable goods and also deliver new solutions that will make it easier to ensure those goods across the continent. Tega, welcome to Business Edge. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Tolu, for having me. So I think where we need to start off is in terms of looking at the factors that really put together the equation that ends up making food prices, particularly here uh, in Nigeria. So Tega, starting from there, what are these factors that you've seen in recent times contributing to rising food prices uh, in Africa's largest economy? Um, so I would say there are two. I would categorize them into two. Um, I would say they are the internal factors and they are the external factors. Um, the internal factors are basically your cost of product, your cost of production, which you know it's the land, the labor, the capital, as well as the um, entrepreneur who sets that all up. And then you have some external factors, which include things like uh, the laws of the land, um, certain events which may also occur to lift to lift some of those prices. And if you look historically, what we've seen is that, especially in Nigeria is that while other cost of productions are stable, the capital aspects, which include things like your transportation, um, inputs, the cost of input seats, all those keep changing and keep um, affecting the overall pricing. And some of the factors that are you know, affecting that are things like you know, your FX, um, the cost of fuel, you know, and these are some of the things that are actually driving up the cost of food in the country. So given the fact that we've seen what is now an all-time high for food prices, and that was before the announcement of the removal of subsidy, uh, let's look at a, a quick look at a prediction now. We have a month to go, another month to go. Looking at the quarter, how do you think things are going to play out when Nigerians are going to the market uh, in the wake of subsidy removal when it comes to food prices? I, I, I think it's going to be a tough couple of months for every Nigerian. I would say subsidy, removal of subsidy is one of those factors because today the, the transportation cost for food production covers about 40% of that cost, right? So the rest of the 60 includes your fertilizer, the product, the inputs, and so on and so forth. That's 40% today. Now, increasing the four prices, increasing the price of um, PMS um, would typically add another layer to that cost. So. I would expect that that should, you know, significantly go up. Um, we're also there are also speculations about trying to drive um, ensure that you know the, the parallel the, the the FX rates in the black market as well as what's obtainable from the Apex Bank are similar. That is also another um, thing that we we do expect should also affect you know the prices of inputs because when you look at the inputs, things like uh, fertilizer, you look at things like the seeds that go into the ground, a few of those seeds are actually imported and people pay, you know, uh, USD, you know, for, for this sort of commodities. So I, I would say that for the next couple of months, it's going to be really tough. Um, and hopefully the government, you know, is mindful of this and taking proactive measures to ease some of these shocks. All right, so let's look at some specific food items now. In terms of this uh, significant increase we've seen in prices, is it across board or with particular items that end up being staples for many Nigerian households? I think it's, gonna, I, I think it's across board. Uh, and when we're looking at PMS, uh, Premium Motor Spirit, 
It's um, what's used to flood the vehicles that products from you know the farms to the points of aggregation, and then you have the larger trucks that now move the products. That transportation cost accounts for 40 percent of the total cost of food production today right removal of subsidy is going to drive up that cost so it's going to cut across board so your seeds um your fruits and vegetables especially your fruits and vegetables because those shelf lives are limited so uh, as you produce you want to sell and get it out quickly maybe seeds may not be as drastic because you can store and wait it out um so we may see um some of the grains being produced this year being sold probably next year and maybe the dynamics may have changed um, but um, I think it's going to happen across board. All right so uh, with the estimates and, and the work that your company does we're looking at some over four billion dollars that's lost to uh, African food companies every year because of wastage. Let's go through this in terms of where that waste is and then also taking us to the opportunities because if we're having challenges there are solutions and solution means that there are opportunities for us to make uh, a better a better equation a better opportunity for so many other people take us through that Tega. um so when we're looking at food loss we have different stages of food production um you have the field when it's been grown um so there's there's a wastage that happens when you say i'm supposed to produce 15 tons per hectare but i produce five you know tons per hectare there are losses that may have happened on the seed level but what we're majorly focused on as a business, I figure, is um, the, the losses that happen across the supply chain after the food has been harvested, right? Now, there are huge amounts of losses that are caught across the sectors from things like theft to things like um, storage um, challenges, which also leads to a huge amount of losses that happen across multiple, uh, multiple food, food types. Um, and what we're doing as a business is basically providing real-time visibility into the storage conditions of such products from the point where it is harvested up to the point that it gets to um, the stores where, you know, people can take it up and, you know, you know consume, consume it. Now, a lot of these losses happen as a result of oversight, but also as a result of a lack of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now, with the data that we're providing to the customers, they are able to understand the efficiency of the of, of the storage infrastructure that they have. They can also understand the utilization patterns, as well as also understand where they could site new infrastructure that would be optimally utilized um, for storage in the future. Right now, with this, when we look at the opportunities that abound in in, in this sector, uh, one area that comes to mind that I've seen immediately is for the insurance players. Today, we, we see a lot of the insurance players shy away from um, covering, I would say, goods in transit for perishable products, largely because historically there's a lot of losses that occur in this sector. But you know, with the data that we provide, we're not helping the insurance companies play a part in this. So for example, we've, we've tracked over $600 million worth of commodity in the last three years. And a, a chunk of these were uninsured. But with the data that we can look at, we can actually tell insurance companies where to, who should be insured, right? And who probably should not be insured, how to price the premiums and things like that to do it you know, profitably. And I think that's one immediate opportunity that I can speak to um, as regards what is available. The other opportunity I could speak to is infrastructure. Um, we need cold rooms, we need cold trucks, we need more trucks you know, in, in the business to be able to move products from point A to point B. So that's also another opportunity. And on top of that, I think there's also the financing opportunity, which means that there are people who want to, who want jobs, especially in the supply chain space, storing products, moving products. So there's that opportunity for you to be able to finance people with this set of, with infrastructure as a, as, a, as a form of investment and then get payments, you know, over a three year, three year tenure. This would help, you know, solve some of the immediate challenges that we're having as regards um, wastage losses in the space. So you've given me a hint of how sort of technology is playing into this because you're using data uh, to arrive at some of the gaps and to see what the solutions are. What else is technology doing when it comes to addressing rising food costs in Nigeria? Um, so I think technology is playing a lot of roles. Um, I think one key... Uh, aspect that I've also seen technology play is connecting uh, 
reducing the time between connecting the buyers and the sellers, right? Because one of the major challenges used to be used to be the fact that people have commodity, people want the commodity, but how do we get them, you know, talking? Mm -hmm. And that's one area we've seen technology do this. We've also seen technology greatly improve the quality of inputs that has gone into the ground. Um, and we're seeing a lot of organizations that are doing things such as extension services um, to ensure that farmers are doing things the right way. Because where we are right now is we're, we're trying to achieve self-sufficiency in certain you know, commodity for, uh, for, for the country. But the goal would also be to uh, export some of this commodity that can also increase the inflow of FX into the country. Right. So we've seen technology play some roles in improving some of the qualities of the inputs. Um, we've seen technology like ours improve data points to enhance storage, to enhance um, um, visibility of the business owners. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of players in this space. We've also seen um, commodity exchange um, technology being implemented um, for, you know, sales of commodity and things like that. So, so there's been a lot of um, improvements in this space being driven by technology. All right, uh, Tega, before I let you go, in terms of long-term strategies to ensure food security and even stabilize prices, uh, what are we looking at? What should we be expecting? What should we be working towards? Because, again, with the Russia-Ukraine crisis, we've seen an exposure of our dependency on importing food, our, our dependency on food from anywhere else but really here locally. We've also seen the gap in what is the local production as well as the local demand. So in terms of uh, long-term strategies, food security, and, of course, stabilizing prices, what should we be expecting? If you can give me that in about a minute um i i think there's a lot there's a lot to expect um but i think we, one of the things that was mentioned around having a, an exchange commission as well as building infrastructure minimal pricing for commodities so that um, the government can offtake directly from the from the from the farmers i think this would spur a lot of investments in the agricultural space and also lead to you know um uh, more activities and more activities mean more more supply, um, which would you know typically meet the demand that is um, um, growing as well as also enhance um, export. All right, so it's scratching the surface of the conversation because there's much more when it comes to food security and prices, of course, for food uh, in the continent and particularly here in Nigeria. But this is just the beginning of the conversation. Tega, let me say a very big thank you for joining me. And we look forward to expanding this conversation, especially with how technology is being implemented. So it's not fintech, it's now agritech uh, that really is the space you're playing in. So I know that's a conversation we'll have with you sometime soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Eddie. Thank All you right. for having me. And with the conversation, there's so much interwoven connections, whether it's the financing, it's transportation, it's even being able to get employment in the agricultural sector here in Nigeria and across the continent. But what we know is that we bring these conversations to the fore because African business, the economy and finance are things that we must explore on a daily basis for the growth and, of course, prosperity of our economies and the overall continent. We'll be wrapping things up right here, and I want you to know that you can go to our social media handles. We are at New Central TV. You can follow us there. You can also go to our website, which is www.newcentral.africa. Download our mobile app and take us with you wherever you are on the continent and outside as well. We're here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, putting Africa first. I'm Tolu Lokwe, Adila Rubalogwe. <laughs>